Hey everyone, it's Talia here. Welcome back to another tutorial video on my channel. Today we are going to do my first Easter set of 2021. I decided to do something that looked like a little bit of a scenery mixed with some eggs and of course some Swarovski crystals. So let's get started and I'll show you how. The Step Into Spring collection from Coco and Claire features a bunch of brighter pastel shades with the exception of the yellow that was in the Pantone collection that they released around the same time as this one too. But I knew that these colors would be fantastic for an Easter design and that's exactly what we're going to do. So taking some of the blue in the collection which is called Balderdash, I'm going to do a really thin coat of this. I'm going to try my best to get my cuticles looking really good. And then as I fade closer to the free edge, I'm just going to make it kind of messy because I knew I wanted to create some sort of scenery on both the middle finger and the ring finger. After I've cured the first coat, I'm going to go in with my second coat and do the exact same thing, but I'm not gonna cure it before I go in with my second color, which is the green from the collection, and it is called What Not. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this down on my palette so that I can work with the Coco & Clair Ombre brush, which also recently released. And I'm just going to take the brush that actually comes in the gel polish bottle and I'm gonna put a little bit of it on the free edge and then taking some of the ombre brush with a little bit of the green on it, I am just going to fade some of that product into the blue. Now I want this to be messy. I don't want it to be an ombre because I want it to look like grass, which is why I thought the ombre brush would work really well for it and which is also why I kept the blue uncured. With the Coco and Claire Detailer Number no. 2 brush, also a new release, I am going to take some of the green that is on my palette here, and this is after that last step has been cured so that it's not super messy because I want some more distinct lines here. I'm just gonna do some short, small wisps. I'm also gonna take number no. 260, which is called Mocha, and it's a little bit of a deeper green, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I am not curing in between because I want the greens to kind of blend together and it to give more of a more mixed kind of look not such harsh green lines or light green lines. After I've cured that grass step, I'm going to go in with a Coco & Claire matte top coat. I prefer doing my art and my stamping on top of a matte top coat when working with gel polish versus just removing the dispersion layer and going in with stamping on top of it because I find sometimes it can smear and not look as crisp. I'm going to do the exact same steps as I did on the middle finger, on the ring finger, because I knew that I wanted both the ring finger and the middle finger to be the primary focus of this nail design with the little scenery on it. On the pinky finger, I'm going to take Flying Purple People Eater. It is a nice medium to light, brighter pink color. And it, this one applies so nicely, you guys. You could probably get away with this one going on in one coat, but I do like to do two thin coats, just so not making it too thick or anything. Uh, but it applied like a dream. I was really, really impressed with this one. I know that I want to do Swarovski crystals on both the pinky finger and the thumb finger, and I want them to just be like a brighter color, which is why I decided to go with the purple color on the pinky finger. I knew that I wanted some sort of pink nail on the pointer finger, so I'm going to take number 309 called Willy Nilly. Now this pink is more of a corally type of pink, but it is a nice light pink and I knew that I wanted to do some stamping on top of it, so I thought that it would work really well for this particular nail. Uh, this one went on pretty nice in two thin coats as well. I definitely don't think this one would be a one coater though, especially when you're working with these more lighter type of shades, you definitely wanna do your two thin coats. Now the yellow from the Pantone release is what I decided to put on the thumb finger and just a little bit of a warning for you guys about this yellow. Just make sure that you're shaking this yellow up pretty good because when I was initially applying the first coat of this, I felt like it was a little bit see-through and I don't remember it applying like that when I did my Pantone video for you guys a few weeks ago. So I figured once I shake it up, it would probably apply a lot better and it really did. So just make sure you're doing that with this particular shade for sure. And I've been getting a few comments that you guys wanna see me do the thumbnails in nail tutorials. And generally as a whole, like if I'm working on people, I tend to make the thumb match another nail on the nail design, which is why I don't usually show it. But if you guys wanna see it, I definitely can. In this particular situation, I knew I wanted to make the thumb a little bit different, which is why I decided to film it. 
I did a matte top coat on all of the nails and what you guys are seeing here is me just taking a little bit of alcohol and removing not really a dispersion layer for the matte top coat because the cocoa and Claire doesn't have one but I do find it leaves a little bit of a film so if I'm going to do any sort of sticky polish stamping whatever I'm trying to get to stick to the polish sometimes sticks to the matte nails Taking some white paint, I am going to create some clouds on this nail design and I got this idea from Sarah when we did our compilation video. She did these really cute clouds on top of like a pink and purple nail design and I went back and watched to see how she did it and she did three little dots down and with her angled brush just kind of brought all of the dots together. This is a really easy technique to do cloud nails and I thought it turned out so cute. I love how much depth and dimension the clouds have by using this particular technique. Technique. I am going to go in and do a matte top coat for two reasons. I wanted to stamp something on top of this and I wanted it to have a little bit more depth by stamping on top of another layer of matte. But also if I was to mess up with my stamping, I could easily take it off without wrecking the cloud design as well. For the stamping design, we are going to use the Clear Jelly Stamper Hoppy Easter Hollow Kit. So we're starting to see some Easter stuff from Clear Jelly Stamper. And this kit comes with this cute little hollow bag. And this one has like a pink poof on it. If you guys saw their last hollow collection that they had, um, it had like a little teal puff on it as well. And this bag also is a little bit more pink too. So it's really cute. I like when they do these little collections. Inside the kit, we have the teal baby bling stamper. So the head on this one is the same sized head as on the double-ended stamper, but like the larger one on that one. And it is obviously smaller than the big bling. It's kind of a good in-between stamper. My only thing with this one is it's not the best if you have really long nails, but it is a good one for precision stamping. There's also a foil kit in this one. This is number four, and this one has some pearly matte type of foils to it. And we are going to use some of them in the nail design as well. I like that they are some nice pastels, which are great for spring. There also is a teal silicone brush, as well as the white sticky polish and the CJS Holiday number 63 Hoppy Easter stamping plate, which is a really good kind of well-rounded Easter stamping plate. There's a lot of really nice Easter images on here that you can get a lot of use out of if you are doing some Easter nails. I haven't shared this tip in a while, but I like to take one of these sponges and just soak it in acetone and that way it's ready to go for me to just scrape my scraper off with whenever I am stamping. I am also going to cut some of these foils from that foil kit too. I'm going to take my white sticky polish and I'm going to stamp down a bunny and I like to use my thumbnail to take off any excess polish that I don't want on the nail. You could also use the little scraper that comes with your stamper too, but I find it easier just to use my nail like this. So I'm going to stamp my white bunny down and then I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit, especially when you're working with the foils. You want to wait a little bit longer than you would with chrome because you will smear the uh, stamping polish if you go in too quick. I decided to use a darker gray for my outline versus using a black, especially because we're working with a lot of lighter kind of pastels and black can be a little bit harsh if you are working with lighter colors. I think this design with the little chick breaking out of the egg is so cute. So I am going to do the exact same thing with the white sticky polish and stamp that down first. And I'm going to go in with that same kind of white pearly foil, but this is an example of me not waiting long enough because you can see the polish kind of smear a little bit. And it also transfers to the rest of the nail, which is not a big deal because we can go in with some acetone on a little micro swab and clean it up, which is something we wouldn't have been able to do if we didn't put that matte top coat down in between the layers. The yellow that I'm going to use is number 82 and it is a pastel yellow which fits perfect for this nail design and this is the color that I'm going to use for this little chick and the nice thing about this chick is it lines up perfectly in between the little egg cracks on the white little egg shell. So you just got to take your time and kind of line it up but don't take too long because the clear jelly stamper polishes do dry pretty quick. 
if you notice that they are drying a little bit more just hold your stamper down a little bit longer and it should transfer and I'm also going to outline in the same gray because I really liked how that looked and there's also a really really teeny tiny nose that I'm going to take some orange polish with and stamp that after the gray just so I line it up perfectly. I was kind of curious how it would look if I took some of these foils and did some foils on top of the eggs that I wanted to put on the pointer finger. So I am going to take some blue and some green. I grabbed some pink but we don't end up using it because it is a pink background and I didn't want it to kind of clash with that. I'm able to fit three white Easter eggs down so I'm going to stamp the white down and then I'm going to wait a little bit and then I'm going to go in with the foils right on top of it and it kind of depended on what color I used as to how well it transferred but I'm also really aware of how long I take with using foils in combination with the sticky polish just because I don't want it to ruin my sticky polish that I've just stamped down. So I liked the look of the foils just being kind of random, especially because with this little Easter egg, there is a little design that you can stamp on top of it too. So I knew we were gonna kind of cover this up anyway. Taking some more of that medium to dark gray color, this is where I'm gonna go in with my little polka dots as well as the little stripes. I like that there's two different options for how you're going to do your Easter egg design on top. You could probably even do one where you combined both of them. That would look really nice too. These are my go-to crystal colors for Easter nails and we're going to use Crystal Light, which is the green, Aquamarine, which is the blue, also Rose, which is the pink, Providence Lavender, which is the purple, and Jonquil, which is the kind of lighter yellow color. Because the background for the pinky is a purple, we are going to use all of the other ones. So the pink, the yellow, the green, and the blue to create the crystal design. I'm going to use a big crystal in the middle and then I'm going to use some other smaller ones to kind of surround it. The big crystal in the middle is an SS20. The ones on the sides are either nines or sevens. And then I wanted to make it look like jewelry on the nails. I know I mentioned this a lot, but it's one of my favorite type of crystal designs to do. And I find it looks really nice if you just make the little drop thing go a little bit longer than the things that surround the outside of the crystal. On the thumbnail, I wanted the exact same thing, some sort of nice crystal design. And because it's a yellow background, I am going to use the purple, green, blue, and pink crystals on the design as well. One of my favorite designs to do on thumbnails is this little crystal cluster in the corner. I think it just frames the thumbnail so nicely. I was torn on whether or not I was going to do a shiny nail for these Easter eggs. And you can kind of see what a shiny nail would look like here before I cure the mat. And it does look super cute, but I really like matte foils done matte if that makes sense I think it gives a kind of a neat look to it so I am going to go in with a matte top coat and that is the Easter nail design I like how doing the matte top coat on top of the Easter stamping almost made it look like a chalkboard I thought it gave it kind of a whimsical look this was such a fun design to do I love doing Easter sets and back in the day when I worked full-time on clients I had very few clients that would actually get Easter nails I think by the time Easter comes around they were just kind of tired of all of the seasons with Christmas and Valentine's day and they just wanted something else so it was so fun for me to be able to do an Easter design for you guys today too comment below and let me know what other sort of designs you'd like to see for this time of year are you guys wanting some St. Patrick's Day designs are you wanting some florals I would love to come up with something for you so definitely let me know make sure you're following me on all my social media and I will see you guys in my next video bye